Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Over the last couple of days, I've been looking over the internet and I've seen quite a few channels that talked about early retirement. Some of them from a financial perspective, some from a lifestyle perspective, some both. But the one thing that they all hold in common is they all seem incredibly complicated. So what I want to do is give you six easy steps that you can follow to help you realize your dream of early retirement. So let's get into it. Number one, what is it that you wanna do with your life? You have to determine what it is that you want to do. You don't wanna run away from something, you wanna to run towards something. So figure out what is it that you want to retire for? Is it to spend more time with your family? Is it to do volunteer type of work? Is it to spend more time with friends or spend time by yourself writing a book or whatever the case is? but figure out what it is that you want to do. The second tip is determine how much you need to save in order to meet your retirement goals. Um, you know, how much are you able to save now? You may have to increase your savings to get there. Um, how much can you, how much uh, do you have in your current savings accounts? Like your traditional savings accounts, your money market account, um, your employer sponsored 401k or 403b. And from what I understand, is the 401k and the 403b are fairly similar and generally will have a match. Um, a 457 plan, a 457 plan or non-qualified deferred compensation plans, but sometimes those are set up in such a way that you're able to withdraw money from those accounts before the age of 59 and a half, unlike a 401k or 403b where you have to wait for that. Uh, Roth IRAs and conventional IRAs. Uh, Roth IRAs allow you to take money that you've saved uh, after tax dollars so that way when you take the money out, there's no taxes on it and all that growth that you get tax-free or a conventional IRA where the money's taken out uh, before taxes. But I think a pro tip with all of this, because I am not a financial advisor, nor do I play one on TV, um, is talk to a professional about uh, your financial situation. Uh, financial advisors are great. You can get some that pay a percentage of, of what they make for you from a fiduciary relationship, or you have some that you pay by the hour. But either way, talk to a professional about your finances because there are things that when we do our daily budgets and our monthly budgets and our annual budgets that we're going to forget. We're going to forget things and not be able to calculate in things like inflation. We just came off of a huge inflationary year uh, this past year. And that inflation, that inflation will impact the amount that's inside of your retirement portfolio as you go down the road. So you really want to be able to understand what the impact of some of that inflation or those types of things might be. The other one is taxes. Taxes change. And it wasn't until I, re I retired that I realized the impact of the marginal tax rates, which I think actually helps. But there's also certain taxes that you may not be having taken out when you're in retirement, depending on where you get your funds from. You may not have to pay Social Security tax, you may not have to pay FICA, you may have to pay some of these other taxes, and it may drop you into a bracket where you don't have to pay nearly anything in taxes. A financial advisor will be able to help you with that. And the other one, and I think the most important, is a financial advisor, a good financial advisor, will do some modeling for you. And what I mean by that is they have what are called Monte Carlo scenarios. And so in the Monte Carlo scenario, they'll take a thousand different market scenarios between today and the end of your retirement time. And they can calculate for you based on what you're saving, how you're invested, where you're invested, and a whole host of criteria. They can calculate what your retirement balance will look like over time and be able to tell you the likelihood of you meeting your retirement goals. One of the things that I encountered as an example was because of some market fluctuations, there was a point where I went from um, the high likelihood to moderate likelihood. And so I thought to myself, well, maybe I'll work another five years uh, to make up so I get up to high likelihood of meeting my retirement goals. But when I spoke to my financial advisor, one of the things that he mentioned to me was that Number one, you're in a depressed market, and so when they revive, you're going to be okay. But number two, you could work five more years, but what you're really funding are the years in your life where you're going to have the lowest health, and it's really going to be when you're 95 to 100. And so do you want to take time out of your life now 
to subsidize ages 95 to 100 or do you want to live your best life now? And that was really fundamental in making that decision. So I was not only able to see if there was a potential shortfall, but also able to see when that potential shortfall might be. But fortunately, the market's recovered. It's a non-issue. But it really helps with that peace of mind because the last thing you want to do is go into retirement uh, concerned about whether or not you're going you're gonna to run out of money. Um, the next step is, you know, develop a rough budget just to try to understand what is it that you're spending. A lot of times what we don't understand is we don't understand what we're spending. We know that we buy groceries. We know that we pay for our phone bill. We know we pay for internet and car notes and house notes and all of those types of things. But how many of those things are necessary? How many of those things are not necessary? Um, and what is it that we're spending what on? I know there's a host of apps that are sitting out there now that are supposed to help with subscriptions and things like that. But I don't know about you, but it seems like every time I look at my phone bill, that phone bill is different. And I don't know why. It's some new tax or it's some new something on there. But put together that budget, and even if it's rough, because they say that your spending drops about 20% or so in retirement in some scenarios. But if you understand where you stand now, then it helps you uh, in that planning phase. Uh, the, next, the next thing you want to do is Discuss your plans with your family. You have to discuss them with your family because if you have plans to retire and your family's not ready for that, um, or if your spouse is going to retire and has different plans for retirement and your spouse, let's say, wants to travel and you want to write a book, that creates a conflict. So you really want to get together with your family, have that conversation with the family, figure out what kind of plans and activities do you plan on embarking in. Um, we have an RV, so we like to go on RV trips and take different trips that way and just spend time together and really just hang out because when we were working, we didn't have the opportunity to do that. Other people want to take exotic trips. Uh, different people want to do different things. So have that conversation with your family so you don't do all of this planning, get to that point, and then find that you and your spouse are on different, different wavelengths and then create more uh, stress and tension you know, during the, during the years where you should be living your, your best life. Um, and then based on all the planning that you do, set a date. Um, it's easy to say, I want to retire at some point in a far, far away date, but set a date. But when you set that date, set the date in such a way that you allow yourself the ability to change that date. Um, just a little bit about my journey. I planned on retiring about two and a half years from now two and a half, three years from now. And when we ran the numbers, the numbers seemed to be right and allow for us to retire a little bit sooner. And so we did it. Um, let that day change. And I have another friend of mine who was going to retire on a particular day. Then they changed the day to push a little bit further out because of financial circumstances. Then they pulled it back in and then they're going to end up retiring sooner rather than later. But pick a date. And once you, once you have that date, and you get to that place that you're going to retire and you're comfortable with that date, then the last final step is just retire. Don't stress out about it. Don't worry about it. You've already done the hard part. You've already done the planning. You've already done the preparation. You've already done all of the necessary things to get yourself comfortable with your retirement. So don't ruin your retirement by not having peace of mind because you're worried about having control over different things. Uh, it's like, you know, set it and forget about it. You've done the planning. You know what your budget is. You know what your spending is. Uh, your spouse, you and your spouse have a plan for what it is that you want to do. And you you just get out there, get after it, and start enjoying life. Um, so again, I hope these, were, these steps were helpful. And just to recap the steps, um, the first one is figure out what it is you want to do. Um, Benjamin Franklin once said that if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And so, and I, I think there's absolute truth in that. So just figure out what it is that you want to do with your life. Uh, determine how much you need to save and where, the, where that saving is going to come from. Um, and this is where I say speak to a financial advisor. I think speaking to a professional is going to be the best way to go about it uh, because they'll be able to help you understand things that may not be intuitive to you. Um, develop a rough budget and understand where your spending is going to be. Um, your budget's going to change. Taxes change, expenses change, uh, rent goes up, car notes change, and those types of things. But at least if you know where you're working from, you know what you're working to. 
Um, discuss your plans with your family. Have those conversations with your family. I can never repeat that enough uh, because I you can't. I there's there are so many times when one conversation may head off a potential issue somewhere down the road. Um, then set the date. Don't get so don't get so caught into trying to plan for retirement that you don't set a date that you want to retire. That date may be in 2025. That day may be 2027, maybe 2030 uh, or, or beyond. But at least you have a date. So even if the date is 10 years out, guess what? Now the clock is ticking because if you're on my channel now, you probably haven't set a date. And so the idea of retirement seems so far away, it then becomes overwhelming. But once you set that date, now you know that everything you do is going to move you towards that date. And then last but not least is once you get to that date, retire. Don't wait. Don't hold off. The world will move on without you. And understand, and don't allow yourself to get too caught up into being concerned or scared or nervous or any of those types of things. Some of that's going to be normal because you spent 25, 30 years of your life working. So it's a change. Embrace that change. But, under, but find comfort in the fact that you've prepared and that you've done all of the necessary steps to ensure that you have the retirement that it is that you want to have. So if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the like button, and let me know that you're thinking about me. And if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate. Put those down in the comments. I read every comment and I will respond when those when I when I receive those comments but again I my goal here is just to help demystify the the idea of, of early retirement and if I can do it I think it's possible for just about anybody else so have a great rest of your day and I will be in touch with you soon